Hey everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and you've come to video number five, square number five of Bonnie's Mystery Crochet Along. I hope you guys have liked this journey so far. It's been a blast for me to design these new squares and just to see what they look like putting them all together. And I can't wait to show you video number six next week when we do just that. Well, anyway, uh, I also wanted to mention that if you are coming to this video for the first time, that you can jump right in on this particular square. These are not done in any particular sequential order. Well, they are, but you don't have to crochet them in the exact order that these videos were rolled out. And I would just encourage you to check the links in the video description below and check out the introductory video so that you understand what's, what's happening in this mystery crochet along. And then you can always go back and look at the other four videos. And uh, well, let's go ahead and check out square number five. All right, now I'm excited to show you the last square. This is square number five. And many of you may recognize the Celtic weave and the cable stitch along with the low front ridge. These are the stitches that are going to make up this square. And so I just wanted to cast a vision for you where we're headed. Now, if you have trouble with these stitches, there will be some stitch videos in the video description below that you can check out. And hopefully that will help you. If you've never worked the Celtic weave before, you may want to practice on a small swatch before you get started so that you understand how the stitches and usually the first row goes very well. But when you flip this and working from um, working with the backside facing, instead of starting by skipping two stitches, you're going to work the two back post treble crochets and then begin skipping stitches and I'll show you with detail what that means but it's probably a good idea to make a small swatch before you dive into these stitches. Okay well let's go ahead and start and for this particular square I'm going to be using paint box yarns Simply Erin again the same yarn. Um, this is a number four weight. Um, I have 201 yards per ball and um, I'm gonna need approximately five of these to make the four square. So we're gonna make four of this particular square. One more thing for those of you wanting to match the same colors that I'm using, I'm using color number 228. And just like with the other squares, I'm recommending that you have a size I or nine or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. And as always, a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle for hiding those loose ends. And one other thing that I find extremely helpful is that if you have a few removable stitch markers so that when we work the perimeter round, it just makes it a lot easier to crochet those stitches evenly. We're going to start with a slip knot and we are going to work a starting chain of 52 chains. For row number one, we're going to start in the fourth chain from hook. One, two, three, four. And we're going to work a double crochet. And we're going to work a double crochet in each stitch all the way across the row. And just like I've mentioned in the other videos, I am just working on one side of the V of the chain. I'm working on this loop. And as we come with our perimeter round towards the end, we are going to be covering up the remaining strands of that foundation chain. So go ahead and finish these double crochets. At the end of this row, you should have a total of 49 double crochets, and I am not including the chain three in that stitch count. Now we're ready to begin row number two, and we're gonna chain two chains at the beginning. We're going to skip the first stitch and the next two stitch. So to begin row number two, we're gonna skip a total of one, two, three stitches. And then we're gonna prepare for a front post treble crochet. And we're gonna work that front post in the next two stitches. So two front post treble crochets. After working those two front post treble crochets, working in front 
of those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble crochet in the second stitch that we skipped and in the third stitch that we skipped. And let me just say something, that is just at the beginning of the row. We just don't work in this first stitch. That's that's the only reason why we're skipping three instead of two. And then front post treble in that next stitch that we skipped. Okay, so it looks just like that. And this is what we're going to do all the way across now. We're going to skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches, working in front of the last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. That's one and two. And this is the repeat all the way across the row. I will do this one more time. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. Okay, now working in front of the last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. If you need additional um, stitch videos to watch so that you can practice this stitch, if this is still very confusing, please check the video description below where you can work or, or watch a video that is just on the Celtic, um, Celtic weave all by itself. So I'm going to continue working this repeat all the way across and I'll show you how this row ends. After working this all the way across, you should have a total of 12 sets of four or 12 crosses as you go across the row. And there should be only the turning chain left and we're going to work a double crochet in that turning chain space just like that. Now we're going to turn chain two one, two, and this is the part that I was saying starts a little bit differently than the first row of the Celtic weave. Okay, we're going to start by working a back post treble over the first two stitches, and these would be the two stitches that are on top, that were crossed on top. So we work back post treble crochet. Okay, I'm going to try to go as slowly as possible so that it's not terribly confusing. Okay, now we're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, and the next two stitches that are on top from the other side, we're going to work back post treble crochets over those. That's one. And two. Okay. Now we're going to work in front of these as seen from the front side. So our hook is going to go over in this direction and we're going to work back post trebles first around this stitch and this stitch. So you're going to have to, again, use those nerve endings in your fingers. Your fingers are going to get a workout on these. And um, so I've located these two stitches and get my hook wrapped. And again, as seen from the front side, so the hook comes in the back. And this is the first stitch I grab and work a back post treble. Wrap the hook again and coming in again, I'm working. This is to be seen or crossed from the front side. Come to the next stitch. This is probably the trickiest part of this. Okay. So now if you flip it to the front side, it should look like this. So this is what I mean as seen from the front side. This, the last two stitches were worked like this. They crossed in front. But it's hard to explain that when you're working with the back side facing. All right, so we're gonna do that a few more times. Skip the next two stitches, one, two, and then the next two that again are crossed on top, leaning towards you. Back post treble in each of those two stitches. Okay, so now we're ready to work the two stitches that cross in front of these as seen from the front side, but we are going to come in the back door 
and the first one is right there. Again, locating them with your finger and thumb. And then the next one is right here. So again, coming in from the back side, just like that. And let's look at the front side again. It should cross just like that in front. Let me do it again. Skip the next two stitches. Back post treble again over the two stitches that are on the surface from the last row. Now working in front of these as seen from the front side, which really means behind, but anyway, so we come back from the back side for that first of the skipped stitches. And make sure you do these, uh, the second two stitches. It's very easy to just skip these and just barrel on through the row. And then you realize at the end of the row that, oopsie, we forgot a couple stitches and then ripping has to take place. Okay, I'm do that one more time. Skip the next two, the two that are on the surface here. Back post treble crochet. And then again, we're going to do this one and then this one, but come in the back door all the way. Just like that. And again. And so we're going to repeat this all the way across the row and I'll show you how the row ends. And this is the way it should look from the front side. After working this all the way across the row, you notice there are two additional stitches. So before we work those, we're not going to skip anything. And we're just going to work two back post treble crochets. In the turning chain, we're going to work a double crochet. And let me just pause a second here. Before we worked these last two stitches, we had just worked those two, which, you know, cross in the front, you know, from with the front side facing. And then just the next, very next two stitches are here. And the reason we did it this way is because remember at the very beginning, we started off with the two back post trebles. And let me look at the front with you. And so what we just did there is this is these columns curving around and getting ready to be woven in to the next rows. And see, these are the last two stitches. And then so now, and this is pretty much the same as row one of the Celtic weave. Now I'm saying one, two, we just, we just completed row three, but as far as the Celtic weave goes, it is a two stitch repeat. So our first row of the Celtic weave was here, which was really row two of the project or of the square, but row one of the Celtic weave and row two of the Celtic weave, and that's worked with the backside facing. So let's go ahead and work a repeat of row one again. We're gonna chain two. We're gonna skip this first stitch, because again, we're not gonna work in the end stitch as we go forward. Skip the next two stitches, and now the next two stitches to work are fairly obvious because they're right here. They're, they are the ones that are leaning this direction and are on the surface. So we work front post trebles over these two. And then working in front of these two stitches, we pick up these two stitches that we just skipped. Front post treble over these. So at this point, by row three, you should be recognizing this weave very well. And if you're not, then maybe there is something that needs to be redone. So now we're going to skip the next two stitches. Now notice the next two stitches are hiding. They're, they're, they're right here. You can see the top of the loops. Skip these two. And the next two we work over are the two that are on the surface. Okay. So one, Again, front post trebles. Now we're going to work in front and these last two stitches worked. We're going to work these two stitches that we skipped, but do notice that they are 
hiding, you may have to dig them out a little bit here. But, but just go ahead and make sure that you see them and do this one first. And then the next one. And we're going to do that all the way across. I'll do it one more time with you. Skip the next two stitches. And again, these are the stitches hiding. And the stitches that are on the surface, you do those two first. One. And again, front post tr treble crochets. And then working in front of those two stitches, we find the two stitches hiding here. And go ahead and do those next. Front post treble crochets. One. And two. Just wanted to be clear about the four stitch counts or the four stitch crosses. We should have 12 when you're working the row with the front side facing, but when the back side of us is facing, when we're working it from this direction, you will have 11 of those four stitches crossing because one of them, as you recall, you did not skip any at the first here. So two stitches here and two stitches here. So this, the stitch count is still the same, but I just wanted to point that out. So as we complete this row, we are just going to have 12 sets of these all the way across. And then row three ends with a double crochet worked in the chain three turning chain. So after we complete this row, we are going to work four more rows of the Celtic weave. So even though this is coming up, this is the third row of the Celtic weave. It's actually row four of the project. So row five, six, seven, and eight will be worked with the Celtic weave. And um, that would be row five would have the back side facing, row six, the front side, and then one with the back side and front side until we have a total of seven rows of Celtic weave. This is what you should have after completing the first eight rows, which includes seven rows of the Celtic weave. And let me show you how you can count the Celtic weave. But first of all, we have row one here, which was the double crochets. And then to count the Celtic weave, you can count the crosses like this. Okay, so that'd be row two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which in terms of just the Celtic weave, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows, again, plus the row down here. So we have eight rows. Now for row nine, this is the row that we're going to work to discontinue the Celtic weave. And we work this row to get rid of the up and down, up and down um, nature of the row that we just worked. And this kind of smooths everything out so that we can continue. So now to work the row to discontinue the Celtic weave, we're going to chain two and then we're simply going to work back post double crochets across each stitch or over each stitch. Okay, so make sure that you work, you know, those four back post double crochets for each set of crosses that you crochet over. And so I'm going to work this all the way across the row, but I'm going to show you just how this evens out the top. So go ahead and work those back post double crochets all the way across and I'll show you how the row ends. At the end of the row, we're going to work a half double crochet in that turning chain. So we have been working double crochets, but at the end of this row, we're going to work a half double crochet in that chain three turning chain. Okay, now let's take a look at what we have and you can see how that row just really smooths out the surface of that stitch. Okay, now we're going to work the low front ridge, which starts with a chain one. And for this stitch, we are only going to work in the front loops going across. And then when we come back, we're going to work in the remaining loop of the uh, stitch. So we're going to skip the first stitch since this chain is going to lay in front of it as if it has been stitched. But this is not going to affect our stitch count because the row that really maintains the stitch count is the row two of the low front ridge. So this is actually rows, these are rows 10 and 11 we're going to be working, but concerning just the, the low front ridge or LFR, it is row one. So let's go ahead and we work a slip stitch and you can see how that chain 
lays across that first stitch and that just prevents a bulge here as well so so now we're going to just work slip stitches and a slip stitch you do not wrap anything once you pull the yarn through so we're going to work slip stitch in that front loop only all the way across the row Once we get to the end of the row, go ahead and work a slip stitch in that turning chain, just like that. Now let's take a look at what we have that we'll be able to see that better once we complete the next row. So we're going to turn, this is with the back side facing us, and we're going to start this row with a chain one. And we're not going to work in the chain space, we're just going to work in the remaining loop which is right here if you're not sure you can look at the stitch and then just kind of go up and you can see that remaining loop right there and we're just going to work single crochets in each of those remaining loops all the way across the row and once we do that this is what you should have on the other side and see how that's a nice a nice ridge here if you're not getting that right now then you may want to pause and look at this again I have another video in the video description that you can check out called the LFR or low front ridge and maybe sometimes looking at it in another color or in another video will help it to be understandable so I'm going to go ahead and finish this and I'll show you how to end the row I've worked all the way across, but there is one stitch remaining. I just want to make sure that you see where that last stitch is worked. Right there. And let's turn and look at what we have here. So you should have a nice low front ridge all the way across. Now we're ready to begin row number 12, and we're going to start with a chain one. And we are going to work the cable stitch. This is a little bit of an interesting stitch, has a lot of twists and turns, but I think very doable. Um, so go ahead and watch a few times. And again, we have extra videos in that video description should you need additional help. We're going to start with a single crochet in that first stitch. Then we're going to chain three, one, two, three. Now we're going to skip two stitches, one, two, and then single crochet in the next stitch. Okay, so that's what we should have at first. After we complete that, we're going to turn, turn to the left, and then we are going to work single crochets in the three chains and just work them along the side. Do not hunt for that back bump. That would just really be a waste of time on this stitch. So we work one, two, three single crochets, one in each of those chains, and then in that single crochet, we work a slip stitch. And then we're gonna turn again, so, but in order to just be able to turn back this way, instead of just continually turning this piece in circles, I'm going to turn back, and then I'm gonna bring the yarn to the back side again. I'm gonna pull what we just worked down to reveal those two single crochets that we skipped, we're going to work single crochets in those spaces. One, two, and we've completed our first cable. Now we're going to do this all along the row. Chain three, skip the next two stitches that have not been worked. One, two, and single crochet in that next space. Again, turn to the left single crochet in each of those chains. That would be three of them. And then slip stitch in that next single crochet. Go ahead and turn it back. Bring the yarn. Just bring the yarn to the back of your work behind like this. I'm trying to go as slow as possible so that it's understandable. And then you can pull this cable that we just made down to reveal those two stitches that we skipped and single crochet in each of those stitches. I'm going to do this 
a couple more times for you, especially for those of you who have never seen this before. Chain three, skip the next two stitches that have not been used. One, two, single crochet in that next space. And we're going to turn our work to the left, single crochet in each of the next three stitches, which are those chains. Slip stitch in that next space. Now turn your work back, bring the yarn, or you can even do it this way, bring the yarn to the back of the of your work and you can pull this down revealing those two stitches and single crochet in each of those stitches. And as you can see, this makes a lovely cable, very nice surface texture. So go ahead and um, I'll do this one more time. One, two, three chains, skip two, single crochet in that next stitch, turn to the left, single crochet, in each of those chains, one, two, three, slip stitch in the next stitch, and then I bring the yarn to the back, and then turn this back to the front, bring this cable down, revealing those two stitches that we skipped, and go ahead and single crochet in each of those. So work this all the way across the row, and I'll show you how to end this row. After working these all the way across, you should have three stitches left. And so we are going to chain three, work that last one, skip two, single crochet in that last stitch, and then turn to work in the chains again. One, two, three single crochets, one in each chain, slip stitch, and then bring the yarn to the back side and pull this down and we're going to work single crochets in those two stitches we skipped. Now we're going to double dip the last stitch where we anchored that last single crochet. Go ahead and work another single crochet there. Just like that, you should have a total of 16 cables across this row. Now we're going to turn and we have the back side facing and this is row two of the cable stitch. We're going to chain one. We're going to work one single crochet in that first stitch. Now we're going to be working behind the cables and this is what we're going to do all the way across. We're going to work two single crochets in the next. And then if you pull back on this cable a little bit to reveal the stitch where it was anchored, work one single crochet and go to the next space, which is right here, behind the next cable, work two single crochets, and you can pull back on the cable a little bit and do one. And we're gonna do this all across the row, and I just wanted to be very clear. We put the first single crochet in, which is technically not exactly behind this cable, but then we work two and then one. So we should have a total of three single crochets behind, behind each cable with, again, the exception is you have this single crochet at the beginning. So I just don't want that to be too confusing. So again, two single crochets in that next space and then pulling back on the cable a bit, one in that next space. So go ahead and work this all the way across the row and I'll show you how this row ends. Okay, after working these all the way across, again, working three stitches behind each cable, go ahead and work one stitch either in the turning chain or the last stitch of the row right here. Um, that way it, you're gonna anchor that. You will have a total of 50 single crochets after you work this row. Okay, this is what you should have after working those two rows of the cable stitch. Now we are ready to do that one more time. So we're going to repeat rows one and two of the cable stitch. I'm going to go ahead and start you on row one and explain um, how this row ends because it is going to end slightly differently. We're going to work a chain one, 
single crochet in that first stitch and just as a quick review chain three skip two stitches single crochet in that next space turn to work in the chains we're going to single crochet again in each of those chains although you should be pretty good at this by now if you've gotten to this point and slip stitch in that next space bring your yarn to the back side and then working in those two stitches that we skipped single crochet in each of those okay so now we're going to just continue working this all the way across but when you get to the end of the row you are going to have a stitch here so instead of double dipping in the um in the chain like we did at the end of this row you will have an extra stitch here just the way the stitch count works out so just go ahead and work that final single crochet that anchors that last cable right here you will still have 16 cables so go ahead and finish cable rows one and two one more time now I'm going to go ahead and work the last, the last cable stitch of row one, skip two, and notice that we do have an extra stitch here. I just wanted to be really clear on this um, in case you get worried because we didn't have that stitch on the first cable rows, but we do have it there for the second, and don't worry about that, that we have been brought back to the right stitch count. Um, work those two single crochets in those two skipped stitches and the single crochet in that remaining stitch. Chain one and row two of the cable stitch is worked the same way that we just worked these two rows down here. We work one single crochet in that very first stitch and then two in the next and then one in the next. Again, trying to keep three single crochets behind each cable. So two single crochets and then one. And we're gonna work this all the way across the row. And at the end of this row, you will also need to work a single crochet worked in the turning chain right here at the end. That's after you work the three stitches behind the stitch and then work an additional stitch just like we did two rows earlier. Once you complete, this row we're going to also work rows one and two once again of the low front ridge if you need to go back and look at that i'll put a little um, time mark at the bottom where you can take a look at the low front ridge that's where we work the slip stitch in the first front loop and in, in the front loops only and then we work single crochets in the remaining loop as we go the other direction so go ahead and finish row two of the cable stitch and then work rows one and two of the low front ridge and then I will show you how to return to the Celtic weave. This is what you should have after completing 17 rows of this square. Now we are going to return to row two of the Celtic weave that we worked down here. We're going to work rows two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and row nine, which is the row that we used to discontinue the Celtic wave. That was the rows of back post double crochets worked across the row. So if you need stitch support for this, look at the bottom of the screen. I will put a time mark where that row number two, which is row number one of the Celtic weave, where that begins. And again, repeat um, of the square rows two through nine one more time and I'm going to just go ahead and start you off on these just a little refresher and then go ahead and do those rows two through nine so we're going to chain two and as you recall we're going to skip the first stitch and and the next two stitch as well to begin and even though these are not a taller stitch you can still work your hook around as a post stitch without a problem so we're going to work those two front post treble crochets around those stitches and then again working in front of those two stitches work front post treble crochets again um, as a refresher we are not working the very first stitch of this row and then we're going to skip 
two stitches from that point on, skip two, and front post treble in the next two, etc., etc. So if you need additional stitch support, like I said, go ahead and check out the the time mark that I posted earlier. I'll go ahead and post it again so that you can go ahead and get a little refresher. And after you complete rows two through nine, I will show you how to work the perimeter round. After repeating rows two through nine of the Celtic weave, this is what your square should look like right now. Okay, now we are ready to work our perimeter rounds. And before we do that, let's go ahead and I'm gonna just do another brief tutorial on how to do this, just in case this is the first video you have seen of this mystery crochet along. Okay, I am going to divide the rows, or the row on each side into fourths, and it'll just make this so much easier to crochet the stitches evenly. So you can kind of eyeball this, or you can, you know, actually count the stitches, but I don't really think that's necessary. So go ahead, and, and then we're going to fold this side in half, and place another stitch marker in place. And then do this again on this side. Okay. Okay, so what we are going to do now is we're going to get our hook. And to begin this um, perimeter round, let's go ahead and get the yarn on the other side. Okay. We're going to chain one. And what we are going to do is we're going to work 40 single crochets evenly across. And by dividing it into four even sections, we just have to work 10 stitches evenly in between the stitch markers. It just makes it a lot easier to crochet these stitches evenly. So I'll just go ahead and start this. And again, we've chained one. And then we're going to just work 10 stitches evenly. Obviously, there are more stitches here than than 10, so I'm going to skip stitches occasionally. I'm going to try to do this very judiciously, um, not skipping them all at once, obviously. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to skip another one. Seven, eight, nine, and 10 and then we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and skip this one okay again you can just do this however you wish across and then I'm gonna put 10 stitches in between the next two stitch markers as I go along and so on and so forth until I crochet 40 stitches across the side so go ahead and do that and I'll show you what I have when I complete that so this is what it looks like after I've crocheted those 40 stitches evenly across. Now I'm going to turn 90 degrees and I'm going to go ahead and put the stitch markers back in. Put that one in the center and then do this again. I'm not going to include these stitches as I compare to find the center just because they are not part of that side. Okay, I want to get this as evenly as possible. So put one there. And let's fold this again. Again, we're getting a ballpark. It doesn't have to be absolute exact, but you, you want to be close. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I've come again to the end of that one side so I'm going to chain two, one, two, and then I'm going to work my first single crochet working along the row ends in the same place as where the last single crochet was worked and so there, thereby creating a chain two corner and we're, we are going to be working in that on the next round. So now I'm going to just do that again and, and crochet 10 stitches and I am including this corner stitch you know, in between, you know, the corner and, you know, the chain two part and, and the stitch marker and et cetera, until I have a total of 40 single crochets along this side. And then of course do, do the, you know, the bottom 
and then all the way up the other side and I will show you the chain two connection once we complete that. After working those single crochets across the last side of the square, we're going to chain two and we're going to join with a slip stitch in that very first single crochet of the perimeter round. And go ahead and give it a chain and a tug and we're going to go ahead and clip a generous strand so that it will be easy to hide or crochet over. Now we're ready to switch to the next color. Now that I have the dark green color, this is the color that I'm using for the trim um, around all of these squares and to crochet them together. Go ahead and make your slip knot. There we go. Now I'm going to make a chain two corner in that chain two space with a slip stitch. Go ahead and make a single crochet, chain two, and another single crochet worked in that chain two space. And then I am going to actually work over this little tail, but just work one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. When you get to the chain two corners, go ahead and work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in that same space to maintain that corner. That's going to be very important. And once you finish this round, you are going to have a total of 42 stitches from corner to corner. I'm not including the chain two in that count. So you'll have 42 single crochets on each side of your square. That is very important as we get to the point of um, connecting the squares. So do make sure that that count is accurate. All right, so go ahead and work all the way around and I will show you the connection and what this looks like when I'm finished. After working all the way around the square, we're going to join with a slip stitch in that very first single crochet that was worked for the round and give it a chain and a tug and go ahead and clip a long enough strand so that we can hide these, okay? So let's take a look at our square. This is what you should have. Okay, and as I've shown you in many videos before, just go ahead and hide this loose strand with your yarn needle. And I would go ahead and hide any other loose strands on these squares as you go. As we get closer to putting them all together, you're going to really want to go ahead and hide all the loose strands now. There will be additional ones to work on, um, but go ahead and get as many of those done. I think it'll serve you in the long run. Well, I hope you enjoyed square number five. Remember, you need to make four of them if you're going to follow along with what I'm doing. And again, you have the freedom creatively to make this smaller or larger or whatever you really want to do with it. Well, join me next week for video number six where we will put this all together and we will also add a beautiful trim to each end of this. God bless. Bye-bye.